On December 7th, the U.S. attempted a launch of the latest National Reconnaissance Office spy satellite. What it was launching was a secret, but the satellite is believed to be the latest optical imaging satellite due to its reported orbit. At the last second, the launch was suddenly called off. Five. We should have ignition. Four. Hold, hold. For now, there is no set date on when they will launch the satellite, but this got me intrigued. I'm sure many of you know how this goes. After hours and hours of going down the internet rabbit hole and reading about NRO launches, I came back to Zuma. If you don't know, Zuma was another spy satellite that was launched by SpaceX back in January 2018. From SpaceX's live feed, the launch seemed to go as planned. The first stage booster fired normally, separated a few minutes later, fairings deployed successfully, even the first stage landed successfully back at Cape Canaveral. Unlike most SpaceX launches, they cut the live stream off before fairing separation and did not show the satellite being deployed as its payload was classified, extremely classified. With normal launches of spy satellites, it is at least announced who the customer is. For example, the National Reconnaissance Office in the case of the previously mentioned December 7th launch. But for Zuma, no such agency claimed it to be theirs. It doesn't even fit into any of the numbering schemes used by government agencies, and each agency denied ownership of Zuma. But back to the launch. After the live stream cut, there was reportedly problems. Right away, pretty much all major media outlets stated that there was a problem with the satellite. Specifically, with the craft separating from the second stage of the rocket. With normal launches, a satellite separates from the booster, and the booster then turns around, fires its engine to slow down and fall back toward Earth and burn up in the atmosphere. If the satellite was still attached to the booster, it would throw off its center of gravity and most likely start to tumble out of control. And that is exactly what was reported in the media, that the satellite began to spin uncontrollably and most likely burned up in the atmosphere. And that's pretty much where the story ended. There was some later blaming going back and forth between SpaceX and Northrop Grumman, the manufacturer of the satellite, about who was to blame. The funny part is, since the mission was highly classified, both had to say if there was a problem, it wasn't their fault. Later, the US government cleared SpaceX of any responsibility. And like I said, that's pretty much the end of the story. The interesting part is the fact that something very similar happened before. In February of 1990, the space shuttle launched a highly classified payload called MISTI. MISTI was an NRO photo reconnaissance spy satellite. Again, everything seemed to go according to plan. However, after the satellite was deployed, the media began reporting that the satellite had failed and actually exploded, the pieces burning up on re-entry in the atmosphere. However, later that year, in November, amateur space enthusiasts and observers detected an unknown object maneuvering. Years later, it was discovered in an unclassified database from NORAD that the satellite was still operating. Another piece of the puzzle was that the Strategic Defense Initiative Office filed a patent for, quote, a satellite suppression shield that would give a satellite stealth-like abilities. The patent showed how an inflatable shield could be inflated while in space to hide the satellite both visually and from radar. Now you may be wondering, what is the point of a stealth satellite? Well, satellites are expensive, especially large, high-tech spy satellites. A relatively few number of them are operational due to the cost. Because of this, nations can predict when one will fly over an area. When they do so, they can simply hide whatever it is they do not want the potential enemy to see. An example of this can be seen at Area 51, with what people call scoot and hide hangers, to quickly get an experimental secret aircraft off the runway and out of view from satellites. If a nation has a stealth satellite, presumably you will not know about it, or at least not know its orbit, and will not know when it will fly overhead. And hopefully, for the nation operating said satellite, they can collect intelligence on what a nation might want to hide. Another reason for having a stealth satellite could be to protect against anti-satellite weapons. If the enemy does not know about it, they can't shoot it down. And with all these pieces put together, along with some other information, we have a clearer picture of what happened with MISTI in 1990. The government faked a failure by staging an explosion for everyone to see, especially the Soviet Union. They then quickly inflated the shield on the satellite. 
at which point the satellite went dark, both visually and on radar. Being that the launch was a secret, the media could only report what they had been told by the US government, and that was that the satellite had failed. But in reality, it was still working as planned, and had only been observed as it began maneuvering in November 1990. An interesting thing about this date is that it is shortly after Saddam invaded Kuwait, and right before the US began Operation Desert Storm. But let's get back to Zuma. Zuma, like Misty, required an extremely gentle release from the rocket. So gentle, in fact, that a specific payload adapter, which separates the satellite from the rocket, was built and meticulously tested. Now every satellite itself is fragile, but this one much more so. Could such a reason for such delicacy be a fragile, inflatable balloon, which gives it its stealth-like feature? One of the reasons Misty was later detected was that the shield did not fully hide it visually. As a satellite orbits the Earth, the sun hits it from different directions, making it much more complicated to make sure that you are not reflecting any light from the sun back to the Earth for people to see. In the nearly 30 years since, it is possible that they have found a solution to this problem. Development of MISTI and the shield was carried out under intense secrecy, meaning it would have been limited to how many scientists and experts they could have consulted with. While Zuma was just as, if not even more secretive than MISTI, the basic concept for such a stealth shield has been public for decades. Zuma was also reportedly extremely expensive, costing some $3.5 billion in total. Is it possible that some of the reason for such a high cost could have been developing materials and systems to hide the satellite from detection? And there have been many public debates and statements by US congressmen criticizing the high cost of these stealth satellite projects, as well as others vigorously defending them. Another interesting fact about the Zuma launch came from a commercial airline pilot who took a picture of the second stage of the SpaceX rocket maneuvering for its re-entry burn. While not direct proof, the image appears to show a normal scene of the stage flipping around to burn its engine. Now, the picture may look strange if you've never seen something like this before, but it looks like a clean 180 degree rotation, no tumbling or out of the ordinary maneuvering. And remember, it was believed that the satellite and the rocket failed to separate and began to tumble. Again though, this is not direct proof. It could have begun tumbling after the maneuver, or it's just not visible in the image taken so far away. Satellites are not like aircraft. Space launches are very obvious and virtually impossible to hide. So how could you secretly get something into orbit? Well, you could attach it to other typical satellites and have it separate when the time is right. Both the US and Russia have done this in the past. In fact, just recently, a Russian rocket launched, officially releasing three satellites, Cosmos 2530, 2531, and 2532. However, the US military states they detected two other pieces separating from the rocket. A similar thing happened in 2014. Another way of doing it, as evidenced with MISTI, is to fake a failure. If this is the case with Zuma, it would not be the first time this technique was used. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying that this is what happened with Zuma. It very well may have failed, but I think it's more than worth noting the similarities between the two launches and the media's reaction to each. Time may tell though. It's possible some amateur space enthusiast armed with a telescope may one day find Zuma in orbit and working as planned the whole time. And real quick, I wanna talk about Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in everything from design to business to technology that helps you learn cutting edge skills. They teach you the skills you need to succeed in today's and the future's economy. In some cases, having those skills can be more valuable than having a college degree, and at a tiny, tiny fraction of the price. And with my link, you get two months free of unlimited classes. Sign up, try it out. If you don't like it, cancel. But make sure you use my link here so you get those two months free, and so they know that I sent you. The link is in the description.